Hello, welcome again. In the chapter 3 of our video session, we discussed about units of vibration. We looked into displacement, velocity, acceleration and their interrelationship. Further on, we also looked into the parameters of phase and frequency. We used a simple pendulum to explain the whole concept. So moving on now, we will be discussing something about the, the transducers that will be used in most of the vibration measurements. When I say vibration transducer, even though most of us for most of the practical purposes as of today use acceleration or accelerometers, it is good for me to just take you through to the evolution of how other types of sensors like displacement transducer, velocity transducers were used and now for whatever reason that they are not being practically considered even though some users still exist. So let's begin with displacement transducers. There are basically two variants, contact type and non-contact type. For the reference of understanding, let's make use of a non-contact type where a steel armature moves in the vicinity of a magnetic or an electrical field. The movement of this armature or the plunger in the magnetic field is calibrated to give output of proportional displacement in terms of voltage, sometimes current as well. This happens to be the most fundamental type of displacement measurement. There are other variants including laser based displacement measurements as the time has progressed. This vibration is also represented by other units like velocity and acceleration. It is essential to know how a velocity transducer is constructed and how is the working principle. In a way, a displacement transducer and a velocity transducer by construction could be compared. I am referring to a non-contact type, but essentially in a velocity transducer, it uses mutual induction as the basic principle. Here there will be two electrical coils in the influence of which an armature moves. The armature is centered in such a way that the net voltage or the current output from these two coils will be null or zero when there is no motion of the armature. The moment the armature starts moving in the vicinity of this coil, a differential voltage is generated in these two coils resulting in a proportional velocity, voltage proportional to the velocity of the coil movement. So, by construction, even though the displacement and velocity transducers may look similar, in velocity transducer, the movement of armature is proportional to the velocity and thus the output will be measured in velocity units. Both displacement and velocity transducers have their specific applications and continue to be used in many of the applications even today. So we looked into the measurement of displacement and velocity using appropriate transducers. Now we know that for most of the practical purposes, it is good to measure acceleration as the basic quantity of vibration and then use integration or some other numerical method to derive velocity and displacements. This said, I need to have a appropriate transducer to make measurement of acceleration primarily. Over the development of technology, there were many attempts to make measurement of acceleration in appropriate way. But around 1980s or so, a piezoelectric element based acceleration sensor came into use. This became in a way a, a hit by night in the sense that most of them accepted this as the most versatile, uh, rugged, practically very much usable type of sensor and also for the reason that the basic measurement being acceleration and could be used to derive other two quantities of velocity and displacement. There are many variants of accelerometer type. Basically, you can categorize them into piezoelectric, piezoresistive and piezocapacitive. Even though there are other forms in the development and we're sure to see these types coming up in the market sooner or later. Basically, a piezoelectric accelerometer works on the principle of force proportional to the acceleration, which is F is equal to M into A. Let us see a typical piezoelectric accelerometer and how it functions, what are the internal construction and principle. In the next session, we will be starting with introduction to data acquisition systems. 
their types and uses and all the detailing about it. Till then, take care. Goodbye.